An excerpt from the comic strip, Iqbal, The Little Carpet Boy, written by Magnus Bergmar and illustrated by John Ake Vingfist. As we read, it's going to be important for you to listen to or read along with the words, but also for you to look at the picture and try to figure out what details the picture is providing that add on to what the words are saying. Iqbal was posthumously the first receiver of the World Children's Prize in the year 2000. The World Children's Prize program is an educational program open for all schools and students ages 10 to 18 years old. It promotes a humane world where the rights of the child are respected and every new generation grows to humane global citizens. 35 million students have participated in the program presented at www.worldchildrensprize.org. So let's start the story. Iqbal thinks constantly about how hard his life is, but he can't think of a way to be free. All the boys in the factory are debt slaves. None of them have a peshki, which is what the debt is called, less than when they started to work for Gullah. After five years in the carpet factory, it would become even worse for Iqbal. Iqbal's half-brother is getting married. I need a sack of sugar for Aslam's wedding. Here's what you'll need. I'll charge it to Iqbal. Iqbal, you'll get time off when your half-brother, Aslam, gets married. Oh, thank you. Iqbal arrives at the wedding, not knowing that it's he who is paying for everything. The bridegroom has arrived. The women begin to dance. The bridegroom receives necklaces of money from the guests. Iqbal is happy to be at the party, which lasts three days. But after the party, you have to make up the time you were absent for the wedding. And by the way, after your half-brother's wedding, your debt has gone up to 13,000 rupees. One day, a man comes by and speaks with the carpet slaves. My name is Yusuf. The Peshki debt which makes you slaves is unlawful. Follow with me to a meeting of the Bonded Labor Liberation Front, BLLF, tomorrow, and you will learn more. Look out, the owner's coming. You know what will happen if you leave your work. Iqbal ignores his owner's warning and takes part in the meeting anyway. Say, didn't I see you yesterday? Yes. At the meeting, BLLF's leader, Isan Ola Khan, speaks. Debt slavery is forbidden. No one can force you to work. You have the right to be free. Children shall not work, but rather go to school. What's your name? He asks Iqbal. Iqbal. I'm Isan Ola Khan. Would you tell us about your work? Even though he's shy, Iqbal gives a little speech. Our owner Gullah is cruel. I don't want to work anymore. I want to go to school. You were good, the man tells Iqbal. Here is a freedom letter. It says that you're free according to the law. Show this to your owner. Where have you been? His owner asks when he returns. You can't force me to work. Read this. What is this? My freedom letter. Ha ha. You'll never get free of your debt, his owner says, ripping up the paper. And he takes Iqbal back into the building. Iqbal is back in the carpet factory. Yusuf comes to see Arshad Gullah. You must release Iqbal. BLLF's lawyers will help him. You will pay for this, Yusuf, his owner thinks. In Lahore, Isan is thinking about Iqbal. I'm worried about this little boy in Marik. Let him attend the Apna school here in Lahore, someone says. Would you like to go to school? Yes. Two of Iqbal's dreams have now come true. He is free and he can now begin school. Please read, Iqbal. A-P-N-A. 
Abna. When Iqbal visits his home village, he speaks with children in other carpet factories. Many are now daring to leave their owners. Arshad Gullah, his old owner, comes to Iqbal's house. You must begin to work again. Otherwise, the others won't work either. I don't have any time for you, Iqbal says. Be careful. You'll now have Arshad as an enemy. I'm not afraid of him any longer. He ought to be afraid of me, Iqbal says. Iqbal now speaks at BLLF's meetings where free debt slaves gather. We are free. But Gullah hasn't forgotten Iqbal. I'll see that you go to jail, he threatens. Muhammad Rafiq, the man who Gullah delivers his carpets to, threatens Iqbal. I'll kidnap you and your mother. Watch out that you don't disappear. How's it going in school? I'm studying as much as I can. We've received an invitation to Sweden. Would you like to go with me? Iqbal tells his friends, I'm going to fly, but I promise to bring presents back with me. Lucky you. After visiting Sweden, Hassan and Iqbal continue on to the USA. The Youth in Action Award for Human Rights is given to Iqbal Masi. Iqbal is also given a scholarship. When he finishes school in Pakistan, he will have his study at an American university paid for. On returning to Pakistan, Iqbal is greeted by his friends. But there are others. Hassan Ola shall die. Iqbal shall be punished, they say. On Easter Day, the 16th of April, 1995, Iqbal goes home. The carpet manufacturers know that Iqbal always comes home to visit on Christian holidays. Hello, mother. How is my dear sister, Sobia? I've missed you, dear brother. Later the same day, Iqbal meets his relatives, Faryad and Liaket. Iqbal, we're going to bike out with food to a monotine in the field. As they're biking out in the field, suddenly, Boom! The former debt slave boy, Iqbal Masi, who fought for children's rights in Pakistan, is dead. The news spread around the world. <laughs>